started. Um, I want to introduce you to Jesse Erguin, Shauna Henley, and Araceli Rodriguez from Grid Alternatives. This session will be about the Grid Alternatives Solar Program, one of two of our community-based organizations that are engaged in providing access and the benefits of solar PV to qualifying TCC residents. This section, uh, session will focus on the status of grid alternatives, grid alternatives effort, including lessons learned, provide an overview of TCC solar training at grid and share some information on how families can apply for a solar system on their home. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jesse. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jesse Aragon, and I'm a development consultant for Grid Alternatives. Um, I've been engaged with Grid for about the last eight years, and I'm glad to be here today with a couple of my colleagues, uh, Araceli Rodriguez and Shauna Hanley, uh, who will be helping us, uh, helping me do this presentation. So uh, let's launch into this. And our presentation is really about uh, transform uh, Fresno uh, solar efforts and impacts, uh, as well as opportunities um, that we are uh, developing uh, as grid alternatives. And it's part of the um, grid solar collaborative. And just want to start by talking a little bit about grid alternatives. Uh, we're an international solar installer. And we've got nine offices in the United States. And we uh, also operate programs in Nepal, Nicaragua, and Mexico. Um, we opened in 2009. Uh, it was uh, with a very, very small office off of Weber Avenue. And we are now located at uh, 4140 North Brawley uh, Avenue here in Fresno. And so we're uh, one of the community-based organizations that's uh, helping uh, move a lot of the effort uh, around TCC. And, uh, and then uh, moving forward, we're going to, you know, talk about some of the progress of, of our program, as well as uh, share some information about really what we're learning uh, about it. Uh, as I said today, uh, uh, presenting today are myself, uh, Araceli and Sean Hanley. Um, and we're going to be having uh, a change in grid leadership uh, starting Monday. So uh, our executive director of the last 13 years uh, has decided that he's going to retire on April the 29th. So assuming the leadership positions is a co-director uh, arrangement that was uh, decided upon by uh, grid leadership, which uh, would be David Griffin, who would be one of the incoming uh, executive uh, co-executive directors, as well as Karina Gonzalez. So I'd like to congratulate them on their uh, on their new promotion and uh, their new challenges. Kind of starting with our program, um, we've installed a total of 27 homes, uh, and we uh, had now completed. 124.95 of 182 KW, so KW is a kilowatt uh, that have been uh, contracted. Um, what, what is interesting uh, to note is that the average system size uh, for our families receiving solar in uh, the TCC area uh, is 4.63 kilowatts, uh, which is slightly larger than what we had uh, anticipated in terms of our uh, design for the program, which was projected at three kilowatts. So um, that's, uh, it's really based on the individual family needs. And so what we, what we have learned is that, you know, people use more energy than what we had uh, considered uh, might be uh, an average size system uh, when the, we first conceived of uh, this project uh, in partnership with the Strategic Growth Council, as well as the city of Fresno. So 
Our average cost per system uh, is running at about eighteen thousand five hundred and twenty dollars, um, and so as, as you can see, you know these are uh, these are not cheap systems when they do go in, uh, and uh, we're glad to provide that uh, with the funding provided uh, through this program. Uh, our completion uh, rate is now at sixty nine percent, and so we're pleased to report that we're uh, moving right along despite a lot of the different uh, challenges that we've learned. Uh, and when we talk about learning, you know, there's there's a number of different, I think, issues that have impacted this program, not only for GRID, but I think for other uh, program participants as well. You know, the first and foremost, of course, being uh, COVID-19 and all the challenges that has been uh, presented, you know, to, to GRID as well as our uh, other partners uh, in this endeavor. And so, uh, because of that, you know, we had to kind of rethink a lot of our uh, outreach efforts, a lot of our qualifications to really make it kind of uh, a, a distance based, uh, uh, you know, socially distanced uh, way in which we did business. Um, and so we've been able to overcome a lot of those challenges by doing a lot of the work uh, online and uh, using a lot of uh, different uh, technologies like uh, DocuSign in order to get uh, the families to uh, execute their their contracts. But kind of despite all the challenges uh, of COVID, I think you know we've done uh, a fairly decent job, and you know we're hoping to complete uh, all of our installations hopefully by the end of next year. Um, one of the other lessons I think that's even uh, more important is really the the fact that many of the houses in Southwest Fresno uh, really are the older housing stock in the city. And as a result, uh, we have had uh, an inordinate uh, percentage of rejection rates on, on qualifying families, not because they don't qualify economically, but, but because of the status of, uh, and condition of their homes. And, you know, part of the uh, the biggest causes for for rejection are really the substandard roofs. And by substandard, I'm going to show you some examples about that once I move through a couple more of these uh, slides, uh, as well as outdated and old uh, main electrical utility boxes, which create uh, a fire hazard uh, if you don't update them before you put an additional load uh, that solar uh, kind of causes around that and so we kind of coined this term called the workaround uh jesse and, can i stop you right there sure my apologies um our interpreters um were able to finally join okay. so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the interpretation channel please um click a click the globe at the bottom of your screen when i start it and um choose your channel if our, if our Hmong interpreter and our Spanish interpreter can go ahead and give those instructions in Spanish, that would be great. Okay, so let me know when I can resume. Yeah, one moment. Can our Spanish interpreter unmute themselves and give the instructions in Spanish? Okay, how about our Hmong interpreter? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to the Hmong interpreter. 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 Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Tenemos interpretación en español disponible. Para seleccionar su idioma, si está usando un dispositivo móvil, Por favor, toque su pantalla, seleccione los tres puntos, seleccione interpretación de idiomas, seleccione español, seleccione silenciar el audio original y para finalizar su opción, por favor, seleccione finalizado o listo. Si está utilizando una computadora, verá un globo ubicado en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Por favor, haga clic en el globo, seleccione español, luego seleccione silenciar el audio original. Gracias. Okay, I'm gonna go. 
go ahead and start the interpretation. Let's see if this works. Okay, our interpreters, are you able to go into the interpretation channel? No. My apologies, everyone. For the uh, Hmong interpreter and the Spanish interpreter, please go ahead and put your emails in the chat, however you logged on. Okay, Did that work. My apologies, everybody. Okay. Did that work? Okay, we're ready? Yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so as I was uh, uh, talking uh, to the audience that uh, we were having, you know, some serious problems with regards to the projection rates of the homes uh, because of the uh, structural uh, issues that are around substandard roofs as well as outdated electrical main utility boxes. And so we, uh, we got together and put our heads together and uh, came around with what we call the workaround. And the workaround is really uh, designed to provide additional revenue where we could dedicate uh, uh, that, that amount of money uh, that is available through what's called a third party lease option, uh, which generates additional funding uh, for GRID uh, in which then GRID uses its profit margin uh, from that installation uh, and, the, and, and the lease which is prepaid by grid uh, for uh, each family receiving the solar. So it still costs the family uh, nothing to uh, receive and access solar uh, as well as they don't have a monthly payment. So it's actually a, a pretty good deal, which also includes uh, the maintenance on uh, the system uh, should it fail for any reason. Now, this photograph here is a photograph of a roof, a typical roof uh, that actually does not qualify for a solar system. Now on its face, it looks a little bit weathered and it looks a little bit haggard, you know, but when you take a closer look, you're going to find this. Now, if you notice, you know, there, there is some sand uh, that is missing from the composite shingle. And that in, in and of itself, you know, uh, is not conducive to making the roof last long enough uh, for it to uh, really have a solar system on it 
uh, that would last 25 years. So that's really been a problem for us. And so uh, the additional money that's generated through this lease option then allows us to do this. It allows us to actually replace all the roof uh, material, okay, and then uh, start the installation. Now, this roof will last uh, the lifetime of the solar system. Most of that aggregate that you put on there, I believe, is like a 20-year or 30-year uh, warranty on it. And so it, uh, it lasts as long as that system is up on top of the roof. And so... When you, when you look at it, you know, you got a nice clean installation uh, that's professionally done that not only serves the solar system well, but it also serves the families uh, that live in those homes. And so, you know, we're, we're very, very pleased, you know, that we were able to come up with the additional uh, revenue through uh, this lease, lease option in order to continue serving the families in the TCC area. So if, if you uh, pay more than you like, um, you know, uh, on electricity, you know, uh, through TCC and grid alternatives, you know, we would uh, be able to, to assist you uh, to do a couple of things, uh, save some money, invest in your home, and to bring uh, clean power to your neighborhood. Uh, in order to do that, you do need to qualify for a system and so I'm going to pass this over to my colleague, uh, Araceli Rodriguez, who's going to share some information on how to qualify for a solar system. Thank you, Jesse. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Araceli. I'm an energy coordinator with Grid Alternatives here in Fresno. Um, and I want to go over the qualifications for our solar program, um, specifically in TCC. Um, so the Energy for All program brings access to solar energy and savings to families that are living in the TCC zip code, such as uh, 93701, 93706, and 93721. Um, the qualifications are, are fairly simple. Um, the main three are that you must be a homeowner and you must live in the home that you're applying for. Um, second, you have to meet the income limits, which I'll go over in these in, in, in a minute. And lastly, you have to prove that you live in these one of these three zip codes to be able to qualify for TCC funding. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please, Jesse. Thank you. Um, so yeah, the income limits, as you can see on the right, I, I put a chart here so you can see what the income limits are for each household size. But keep in mind that these limits do vary and they, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, um, they do vary on a case-by-case -case basis and we do need, re require you submit verification of your income um, with your application. Um, if you're worried that your income is a little bit too high, we can work with you and see if there's other ways that you can qualify um, if uh, one of these doesn't, isn't the option that you can go. Um, next slide. So the application process itself is um, designed to be simple for families. Um, typically, the first step is you call us. We schedule you for a, a pre-screening where we answer, we ask you some questions to see if your household qualifies um, and see if you meet the requirements for the solar program. Um, in the case that you do qualify, we ask you that you gather the documents that we have to collect for your application. And we'll go, go over that with you as well during the pre-screening process. Um, and then next step is you sign your application and then we'll submit that for you. Um, and there's a step in, in between the application submission and the design that we, I'll go over in, in, in a minute. Um, but once that step is done, the design is, is made for you. We go over that with you to make sure that you are gonna be receiving um, the amount of savings that you feel comfortable with. Um, and then lastly, our goal is to save you up to 75% of your electric bill every month but it can also vary depending on your, your situation and your household usage and um, uh, square footage. So we have to go through all of that before we can even give you the design. Um, next slide, please. So like, like I mentioned, after the application has been submitted, the step in between the submission and the design is called the site visit. At the site visit, this is one of the most important steps during your application process. 
Um, so after you, we submit your application, you, sh you should expect two to three weeks um, for us to go out to your home and do a site visit. So construction will, will actually um, go on your roof, measure the square footage, and then evaluate the condition of the roof. Because as Jesse mentioned earlier, um, we went into the issue of homes specifically in West Fresno that um, have really worn out and old roofs that can stop them from continuing and getting a system because of that roof. So we need to verify that the roof is in good condition before we can even continue with the project. Um, and that's what the site visit is, is for. Next slide. So let's say you are living in a home where your roof is not fit for solar. Um, just like Jesse mentioned earlier, we um, TCC has funding available to re-roof your home in that case. So um, in order to be eligible for the re-roofing um, uh, funding, it's uh, we have to determine whether you're going to be owning a third party or having a third party system. And we have to determine if your roof is old um, and what's what parts of the roof are going to have to be replaced before we can even install the system. Um, and like I said, this varies on a case by case um, basis. So we have to really analyze this, the situation before we can even determine whether we can give you that funding. Next slide. So after all these steps are done um, and you are comfortable with the amount of savings that we're gonna be able to give you, uh, we give you the design and then we sign what's called the, the contract. So keep in mind, the application is not the contract. Just because you sign an application does not mean that you qualify for a system yet. This is why we do the site visit before we can give you the contract. Um, and then once the contract has been signed, you should wait between three to four weeks for to be scheduled for your installation. Um, there has been times when we are delayed in, in installing systems due to stuff that's out of our control. So in that case, we will be in contact with you and let you know um, the status of your installation date and all of that stuff so you don't feel left out and forgotten about um, during your, your process. Um, and then I do want to share a really cool fact about the installations. They're actually installed by the volunteers that we train at Grid Alternatives which um, Shauna will go over that in, in a second, but I just wanted to include that because I think that's a really um, great way to um, in, encourage people to come out and get trained for jobs in solar. Next up, a slide, sorry. Um, and here's my contact information. I included my number and my email address. Um, we are available by phone um, Monday through Friday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, in cases that I don't answer my phone, I'm usually out in the field, but you can feel free to leave me a voicemail or an email, and I will try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I think that was the end of my... All right. Thank you, Arcelli. And I guess I'll just hop right in and get my, my, my um, section. Um, so it's very nice to be here today. Um, and as Je uh, Mr. Jesse mentioned, Grid Alternatives, our mission is to make renewable energy technology, which we use solar um, and job trainings accessible to everyone. Um, so Central Valley Grid Alternatives has provided solar for Central Valley families since 2009, as well as trained and employed over 300 um, participants. Um, today, I will present a brief overview of each training with you all today. Next slide, please. So the first training I'd like to focus on um, is our five-week solar IBT 200. Um, the 200 represents the amount of training volunteer hours that is completed by the end of the five weeks. Um, grids installation um, training program offers job seekers additional training to further develop their skills and prepare for opportunities in as the solar, the growing solar industry. Next slide, please. So, and these skills and knowledge um, are gained where training is conducted in a safe learning environment and speed. So the goal of the program is to train individuals to meet the expectations of solar companies who are actually looking for installers that can install at commercial pace. Um, and employers want to know a couple of things. Next slide. So the two things that they really want to know is if our trainees have the hands-on skills to get the job done, 
and if they have the soft skills to keep the job. Um, so over the five week training, it's coupled with hands on experiences and in classroom discussions, um, including job readiness activities covering a few communication styles in the workplace. And as RSLE mentioned, our outreach team focuses on identifying the families that qualify for the solar installation programs and our IBT trainees, along with our great staff, staff members, they execute all the installs. Next slide, please. So on completing, on completion of the IBT 200 training, Participants will receive solar industry recognized certificates, um, one being OSHA 10 certification, and I'll explain more about um, what that is later on, and the Red Cross First Aid CPR AED certification, as well as two safety certificates, one for the array, which is the roof safety, and one for electrical safety. So these two certificates list, list the trainee, list what the trainee can demonstrate basic competency in um, solar photovoltaic installation skills. Next slide, please. So the next couple of trainings I would like to speak about are the certi certifications in OSHA 10 and adult child pediatric first aid CPR and AED. OSHA 10 and first aid um, CPR AED are earned in the solar IBT 200 class. However, both of these certifications can be obtained without taking the five week training so that an individual may use these certifications in many other industries. Next slide. So as I mentioned, OSHA um, OSHA Training Institute developed OSHA 10, 10 hour outreach training programs to assist employers in training and introduce employees to essential practices of identifying, reducing, eliminating, and reporting hazard associated with their work. OSHA is usually recognized more so in the construction industry. However, this knowledge is for all employers and employees of all industries. Both employers and employees must know their rights and responsibilities regarding safety and health um, at the workplace. Next slide, please. So here um, is the a 10 hour training and how it's ran over the course of two days. So it's 10 hours, so we do five hours each day. Um, and this is pretty much an outline of how it's conducted. Next slide, please. Now for um, first aid CPR. With the knowledge of first aid CPR and AED, skills as so a certified individual can help reduce the loss of life in emergencies. As such, learning how to conduct CPR alone enables one to supply oxygen to a cardiac arrest victim. So increasing the chance that they'll be able to keep this individual's blood flowing and vital organs alive. And these skills are good to have and we never know when we will need them. Um, so on a job, while out shopping, school or training, or at home. And individuals will learn these skills to help adults, children, and infants. Next slide. Um, so here is the first aid schedule. So um, it's a six hour training and it's completed in one day. Um, and this is pretty much an outline of how it's conducted. Next slide. Um, so individuals will be a part of the change in their community. They can learn life saving skills, gain safety knowledge and be aware of the regulations that are required in the workplace. Again, my name is Shauna. I have um, included my um, contact information, phone number and email. 
feel free to give me a call if you have any further questions or if you'd like to get involved. And thank you for your time. Next slide. And I'd like to thank our partners, the California, let's see, it's hard for me to read this. So we have California Strategic Growth Council, Fres City of Fresno, Fresno Housing Authority, and of course, Great Alternative Central Valley. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shauna, and thank you to your whole team for that great presentation. You guys are doing some amazing work out there. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and open it up to our Q&A session. So again, if you are joining us via Zoom, please utilize the raise hand feature, um, and I will unmute you and call your name so you can um, unmute yourself and then um, state your question and someone from our team can answer. If you feel more comfortable writing your question in the Q&A section or in the chat, please feel free to do so. And I'll read it out loud so that can be answered. Looks like we did have a question earlier on um, that I wanted to at least um, capture on our recording. So how does your company get paid for the services rendered? Jesse, do you want to speak to that? Uh, yeah, we primarily have for, for this uh, effort uh, two sources of revenue. Uh, one of them is, of course, the TCC funding, and the other one are some rebates that come from the uh, utility companies. In, in this case, in Fresno County, uh, it is PG&E. Uh, then the, the also uh, the third form of revenue is, of course, the additional revenue that comes in from uh, the families that opt to get their roof repaired. Uh, and, and that is uh, the profit margin and the funding that comes from the uh, from, from the actual lease option itself. Thank you. Any other questions for our panelists? No? Okay, well, thank you again, Jesse, um, Shauna, and Araceli for the great presentation. Um, that's gonna conclude our fourth session of the summit. I wanna remind everyone that all sessions will be recorded and will be posted on the Transform Fresno website, along with all the presentation materials so you can view them later. Uh, we'll now close this session and invite you to attend our last and final session for the day is the EV replacement program. If you're having trouble finding the links to the next session, please visit our website at transformfresno.com and click on the summit page and you'll be able to see the links there to join the session. This session will not be live until um, 3 p.m. and then you can join us all there. Thank you so much again, team from GRID. Um, great job, and we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you, you, Courtney.